The Ukrainian military's operational and diplomatic successes in recent weeks have greatly influenced Russia's aggressive war strategies. And the passive stance of the Moscow administration has also been reflected on the war fronts in Ukraine this week. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shaigu went to the Ukrainian front line for the second time in a week. The Russian minister, who reached the hot region by helicopter, examined the conditions at the points where the soldiers of the Moscow army who took part in the occupation operation were temporarily deployed. Sergei Shaigu, who witnessed that the conditions of his army were in a very bad condition, nevertheless pointed out that such visits would become more frequent in order to improve the morale of his soldiers. Russian soldiers, on the other hand, shared their daily complaints about the mobbing examples in the army, on social media or through different channels, that they are very uncomfortable with their living conditions. The Russian media, on the other hand, tried not to reflect these negatives during Shaigu's visit to the firing line in Ukraine. In other words, positive pictures about the war continued to be drawn on the Russian side. But the current situation is in the direction of increasing grievances and rebellions in the Moscow army. In addition, a critical statement came from Valery Gerasimov, the chief of the Russian general staff, this week. Stating that the situation on the front line in Ukraine has stabilized, Gerasimov explained that his main focus is to complete the operation in Donetsk. But Russian forces are struggling across the entire line of battle in Ukraine. Despite intense missile and artillery attack, Ukraine's defense line cannot be broken in Bakhmut. Ukrainian leader Zelensky also went to Bakhmut before his U.S. visit and sent a shocking message to Russia that the determination would continue. Russia's long-term goals were also among the striking news this week. At the meeting held at the Ministry of Defense, Sergei Shaigu presented two proposals to President Vladimir Putin. Shaigu proposed increasing the number of military personnel in the Russian armed forces from 1 million to 1.5 million. In addition, Defense Minister Shaigu suggested to Putin that a new union be formed in northern Russia against Sweden and Finland's plan to join NATO. If Vladimir Putin approves this proposal, Russia will form a special unit on the border against NATO. The first proposal by Defense Minister Shaigu to Vladimir Putin led to an exponential increase in striking revolts in the Moscow army and among Russian citizens. Shaigu's proposal to increase the number of soldiers of the Russian armed forces to 1.5 million has increased internal conflicts and desertions among Russian soldiers currently on the Ukrainian front line. Currently, the mobilized Russian soldiers, who are tortured daily by their commanders, are enraged by the fact that they cannot eat regularly and are condemned to sleep on wet floors. These striking scandals, which were thrown into the background during Shaigu's visit to Ukraine, actually led to the climax of the terrible insurgency that has been going on among Russian soldiers in recent days. The Russian administration's use of its soldiers as pawns within certain interests drew the attention of even Ukraine. The Ukrainian armed forces did not remain silent about this human tragedy in the Moscow army, and started a surrender practice called I Want to Live in September. A record number of people have joined the surrender line of the Ukrainian army, which has been serving for a long time for Russian soldiers who were tortured and exposed to human rights violations while under arms. Ukrainian leader Zelensky announced that, in line with the provisions of the Geneva Convention, for Russian soldiers who want to surrender, he will provide three hot meals every day and the opportunity to communicate with families and relatives of the surrendered soldiers at any time. In addition, Zelensky's announcement that the safety of life of the Russian soldiers who took refuge in the Ukrainian army will be guaranteed has led to a serious increase in the number of surrenders in the Moscow army these days. A new report shared today revealed that more than a million residents of the Russian Federation are calling the line of surrender of the Ukrainian army. With Russia's occupation losses approaching 100,000, the number of visits to the website of the Ukrainian Armed Forces application called I Want to Live has increased considerably. According to Ukrainian news outlet Pravda, Andriy Yusov, the press secretary of the Kiev government, recently claimed that more than 1.2 million Russians called the Surrender Hotline, which serves as part of a project of the Ukrainian Armed Forces called Hochu Zit, which means I want to live. These shocking figures shook the Moscow administration deeply. As we mentioned, it is estimated that the number of soldiers lost in Russia will exceed 100,000 after the new year. That's why the soldiers in the Moscow army and the local people in Russia look at Ukraine's delivery line called I want to live as a new hope. Currently, the number of Russian citizens who want to surrender has exceeded 1.2 million, as Andriy Yusov noted. And Yusov suggested that these numbers will increase even more after the new year. 
It is thought by the Ukrainian authorities that the number of people calling the surrender line called I want to live will reach 1.5 million in a short time. On this subject, Yusuf said, In this unjust war waged by Putin's occupiers against Ukraine, they are trying to find a way for themselves and their relatives to save their lives. The Hochuzit project was launched on September 18 by the Ukrainian government to assist members of the Russian military in their safe surrender. Currently, the app consists of a chatbot that current or newly mobilized Russian soldiers can use to express their willingness not to fight in Ukraine, and a telephone hotline that they can use to initiate the surrender process once they are in Ukraine. Vitaly Matvienko, spokesperson of the project named I Want to Live, said, The soldiers of the Moscow army and citizens in Russia who took part in the war are saving their lives thanks to this line of surrender. In this way, far fewer of these people will be held on the front line by force by the Moscow government. The more people we help, the better. The Russian citizens who want to surrender to the Kiev army contact the experts again when they are sent to Ukraine, and the Ukrainian authorities determine the location of these people. Then the Ukrainian Armed Forces officials plan a safe exit program for these people. The Special Operation Forces of the Kiev Army, on the other hand, organize the safe exit and the Russian citizens who want to surrender finally reach the region under the control of Ukraine. This is how the surrender line called I Want to Live works. Hundreds of Russian citizens call this surrender line of Ukraine every day because of the brutal war policies implemented by the Moscow administration. President Vladimir Putin and the Kremlin administration are humiliated enough to claim that their citizens who wanted to surrender to Ukraine betrayed Russia. This is how Putin, the leader of the Empire of Fear in Russia, tries to dissuade his country's anti-war citizens. In addition, the Moscow administration has imposed very heavy penal sanctions on Russian citizens who want to surrender to Ukraine. The Russian soldiers who were wanted to be kept in bad conditions on the front line by force no longer want to be put up in this persecution. On the other hand, after the number of soldiers in his army fell to dangerous levels, Putin visited one of his closest allies. Putin's weekday visit to Belarus had increased the concern that a new front could be opened in the war. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko described these allegations as conspiracy theories. Lukashenko also claimed that Ukraine is ready to attack Belarus. But at this time, definitively, the Ukrainian government has not made any statement about the possibility of plans to attack in this direction. This situation, created by the difference between the Ukrainian army and the Russian army, provided a great advantage to the Kiev administration. Because while the Ukrainian armed forces wins hearts with its policy of compassion and volunteerism, Russia wants to keep its soldiers at the front almost at gunpoint. This approach, on the other hand, normally puts the lives of Russian citizens first causing them to surrender to Ukraine. Ukraine, on the other hand, shows the Russians a sense of pity that even the Moscow administration does not show. There is no winner in the war. The important thing is that human feelings are not lost. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications in order to be informed about new videos. Thank you for watching us.